Hi and welcome to the James Beard Foundation's 2013, where does time go, Chefs and Champagne event held at the picturesque Wolfer Estate Vineyards in Sagaponic, New York. It brings me such joy to bring you this show because I get to taste my way from one delicious plate to the next. All these dishes prepared by chefs chosen by the James Beard Foundation. And I get to, if that weren't enough, I get to toss back some delici delicious champagne and wine. And this year we're thrilled because the James Beard Foundation is honoring um, Andrew Zimmer, host of Bizarre Foods for the Travel Channel. And this year he has been awarded the James Beard Foundation Award for TV personality. So if you haven't caught his show, you won't want to miss it. It's very interesting and he eats some crazy foods. Um, but quite a TV personality he is and much deserved award. So you won't want to miss a bite here on WVVH TV, Hamptons Television. I'm here with Susan Ungaro, president of the James Beard Foundation. Always so wonderful to catch up with you. Thanks, Zoe. Here it's we great are to again. See, yes, it's great to see you again here. It's our 22nd year here wow. in the Hamptons. Wow. Having what we consider the best food culinary party so of the year exciting. here. And ha having Andrew Zimmern here, yes. honoring him with this wonderful, prestigious award. We're so excited. This is so nice. This is so great. His yeah. show is so fun, isn't yes. it? Yes. Well, you know, Andrew's won the James Beard Award three times. This is his third this time. Is, yes. This year he won for Outstanding Host for the second time for Bizarre Foods America. Oh. Uh, but, you know, the, also, what people may not know is Andrew knew James Beard. His wow. father, Bob, who's here today, oh, so you should meet him, uh, knew James Beard, and he used to bring Andrew to the James Beard House in Greenwich Village when he was oh a boy. So, you know, Andrew has wonderful roots with our foundation, and he's also an incredibly generous man who has, anytime we want, we need him for something, he always says yes. He was the host of our James Beard Awards once, and he also has presented numerous times at Lincoln Center. Oh, well that's so wonderful. Okay, so I'm so excited for tonight. What what kind of, what do we have to look forward to this evening? Well, you know, we have over 35 of really some of America's best chefs, really including uh, four James Beard Award winners. We've got oh, Alex wow. Gornishelli, we have Maricel Priscilla, uh, Michelle Richard, and Dan Kluger. And we also have some, you know, great uh, chefs, local chefs. Eric Miller is one of them. Um, uh, also, uh, Jason Weiner is one of the chefs locally, and you know it's really exciting to have some local chefs, I think, represented here too. Rosa, Rosa, Chef Rosa, uh, from uh, the North Fork, is also cooking tonight. So, ladies and gentlemen, kick your diets to the curb. It's time to feast on some amazing dishes. Yes. I'm so excited. Yes. So tell me, what's going on at the James Beard Foundation this year? Well, it's really a very special year for us. Last year was our 25th anniversary, and this year is Wolfer Estate Vineyard's 25th anniversary. Wow. But, it's yeah, it's hard to That's believe, right? Yeah. But um, So we are launching post-anniversary a very uh, important national program called Taste America. And this fall will be in 10 cities over five weekends from September 27th to October 11th, celebrating the best of American cuisine all over the country. Wow, that's so exciting. But you and know, you have so many things going on at the James Beard Foundation. Yes. I know just whenever I, I, I jump onto your website, I can just look up all the events and what's coming up and yeah. who's won and right. the chefs that are going to be here and how to buy your tickets for next year because you won't want to miss mm -hmm. it. Thank you, Susan. It's so wonderful to catch up with you. I know you're so busy, but we'll see you around. Well, we're never too busy Aww. for W. VVH, and we love the fact that every year you're here covering really this really fabulous party where I really think it's one of the best ways to celebrate American cuisine. I know, they had to twist my arm. Are you yes. kidding? It's so delicious. It's a d delicious event. Thanks, Zoe. Oh, and it's a, the heat. There's heat, but there's a nice breeze. So Yeah, it may be hot, but I think this is the coolest place to be in the Hamptons this weekend. Uh, Don't you? A little bubbly. You all cool down. Right, right. Thank right. you, Susan. Have a wonderful night. Congratulations. You always do an amazing job.
I'm here with Anthony Bucco of the Ryland Inn in New Jersey. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's what a pleasure. What are to be you here. serving? Well, we're kind of highlighting kind of the virtues of New Jersey. We have a beautiful local caught fluke. In addition to that, we're serving it with Jersey blueberries, Jersey white peaches, and just a touch of Jersey garden herbs. So. I think fluke fish on a night like tonight is perfect. Perfect. You know, I mean, the weather is what it is. So we try to make sure that we provide a refreshing option for the guests that chefs and champagne. Tell me about Ryland Inn. Well, we're an iconic property built originally in 1794. The property's wow. gone through about 200 years of change, and in that time, we've gone through. Uh, well, the property's had three different owners. We're the latest. The property. Ghosts? Any ghosties? Uh, <laughs> Maybe. I'll tell you right now, I'm not the only one in the building at any given point. So that being said, we make sure that we avoid yes, that. There's always two. Yeah, there always is. You always have to have somebody else. What was that? Is that you? Yes. Sir. Okay, Let's go. Okay. Um, but no. Long story short, I mean, it's a great property. It was dark for six years. We were able to bring it back from kind of the ashes and build it into what it was. It was a nationally prominent restaurant in a market that didn't have such a place. So it's been an honor and it's been a pleasure to be attached to it and you know the sky's the limit. So Tell me about some of the other foods that in New Jersey has to offer. Well Jersey's a great state. I mean it is the garden state and it kind of gets that from where we pretty much are located. We're in Huntington County which is kind of like the heart of Jersey. You know we have beautiful corn, beautiful tomatoes obviously, but we have peaches, we have blueberries, we have just about anything that you can imagine. We have the luxury of having a three acre organically managed garden on our property which kind of contributes to our menu and when you're talking about menu development this time of year there's nothing better you know I mean it's an honor to go out to the garden and work with the things that we have so what you know. do you think this sets your restaurant apart I think, you know, the one thing that I think makes us special and unique is we have all the elegance, all the simplicity that is associated with a lot of the higher and refined restaurants in, a, in an urban area. What we are is we bring the trends to New Jersey and we actually set them. We don't just kind of follow things. In addition to that, the one thing that I think we're the proudest of is our ability to touch the earth and make it translate on a plate in the restaurant. And I think that that's unique for our market. You know, and that's something you can't do in the big city. So what does it mean to you to be invited here to the, to the Chefs and Champagne event? Anytime you have a chance to work in conjunction with the James Beard Foundation, obviously it's a great honor. Uh, this is obviously the organization that defines who we are as chefs and I think that it's an honor to be out here in the Hamptons and have an opportunity to work with so many great people, so many great chefs, so many great purveyors and obviously I mean it's great exposure for everybody yeah, involved. and get so. yourself out there. I never knew about the Ryland Inn. Well you have to make a trip out to Hunterdon uh, County. I mean you know it's about two hours, there's no traffic okay. out, of, out of this area so you know I mean traffic throws another you know. What's your route? Uh, I don't even know. I was following. <laughs> we don't even get into that now. I just I follow what uh, <laughs> somebody drives here. Me. <laughs> okay, now we get to the good part, Anthony. Indeed, talk I to get me. to taste it. Awesome. Okay. Well, you know what? I have a beautiful little thing a here. Four. Let me here we go. My first taste of the night. Want me to okay. hold your microphone? You hold the mic, Anthony. Perfect. You're, you're now. Toast. Wonderful. Thank okay, you. Okay, so we have what? The blueberries? So you have the blueberries. So the blueberries are cooked down with just a touch of lime, just to basically pop acidity and minimize the sweetness. It is a savory dish after all. You have that nice, light, sweet fluke, the radish, a little rice crisp for uh, really just texture, a little peach, some call it a day, wow. some nice tangerine crust. You so know, enjoy. A little bit of everything in a bite, so I might just go. There I'm you kidding. go. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever works. So like, yeah, it's hard I'm to cut with that little fork, so be aware of it. that. I'm just going to throw it all in there. So, wow. I mean, I, I guess love the blueberry taste, but there's also a really nice kind of salty taste to it. Yeah, you know, and again, that's going to be that mild salinity from the ocean. A little bit of white soy also kind of helps pop that. Wow. And again, it's just it's supposed to taste like if you were down at the beach and you kind of grabbed the mouthful of seawater and swallowed. I love it. This I could eat more of. <laughs> Go ahead. I love so it. we have plenty. <laughs> My name is uh, John Sully with Celebrity Cruises, based out of Miami. Here we have a uh, Shield Main Lobster Salad with Tagarashi, Hearts of Palm, Caress Pineapple, and uh, Pineapple Lemongrass uh, Vinaigrette. So please enjoy. Um, we're here at a great event, sponsored by the James Beard Awards, Chefs and Champagne. Hey, what else can we say? Chef and Champagne. Enjoy. The group picture. We did, the group. When the temperatures get into the 90s, champagne is one heck of a way to cool down. <laughs> what are you serving? Oh, it's uh, the Belacar Summer. Cheers. I'm here with Andrew Zimmern, host of the Travel Channel's Bizarre Foods America. Mm -hmm. How are Congratulations. you? Congratulations. Not only that, he's the winner of this year's James Beard Foundation for uh, award for uh, TV personality. Indeed. Gosh, but this is not your first award from the James Beard Foundation. This is your <laughs> third. Not one, not two, but three. Um, 
that's interesting. Yes, thing. I was hoping we'd avoid that. It's 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 not that it's uncomfortable. It's just that it's kind of shocking. It's almost like they're talking about somebody else. Um, Could you ever it, imagine that, that your show? No, I be- actually, I I actually when I got nominated, the you know I've been nominated for a whole bunch of different awards uh, from the JBF, which is great, um, to win best on location show once, and then I won TV personality. <laughs> I never thought I'd be nominated. It's like, you know, someone else gets a turn, and shocking of shocks, I got nominated again. And, um, and here we I are. mean, to win that twice was pretty You know what amazing. I noticed? I noticed watching you that yeah. you are very comfortable in the TV personality job. Yeah. And is that, did that come naturally to you? Did you start to start Yes and no. You do, I mean, the, the best thing that ever happened to me is I spent six years doing live local news. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as you know from doing what you do, Getting out there, making a story, having to talk in front of a camera, having to talk to other people, having to punt in a lot of cases. You know, when you're the guy with the live truck out of the corn maze every year and the, the, little, the high school marching band doesn't show up and you're out there and it's just a pile of, you know, dead corn, uh, you learn very quickly how to make something out of nothing. You do it so well. That was the best training that I ever had. You do it so well, and I think that your true personality really comes through. It's not like you're hiding anything. Thanks. Do do you know something? It's it's interesting that you say that because there was a point in my TV career, probably probably the first episode of Bizarre Foods we ever made, uh, where I thought to myself, okay, I'll be this person, and the other voice, the voice in my head that won out was like, no, just be yourself. And I think the problem a lot of people bump into in, in our business is they're not the themselves. You sort of have to roll the dice. That because if, if you're successful and the show keeps going, imagine how painful it is to be acting, especially doing docu-reality television. It's, the anchorman voice, well, yeah, the robot it's, it's voice. It's terrible. I mean, you just got to be yourself and uh, hope people like you. You really, you are, and I think that's one of the reasons why well, you're here. You. And people, thank you. People love watching you. Now, tell me about the process. You you created the show. You're producer of the show. Yep. Is it, do you, you're a small crew, obviously. Do you go out with- It's a very small crew. I work with a really great uh, production company, Tremendous Entertainment. Um, Hair and makeup the, too, the, yourself? No, the, the, show, <laughs> the show really does begin and end with the stories that we chase down about foods in their own terroirs. If, you know, food is great, food with a story is best of all, but food with a story people haven't heard about is what keeps our show relevant. Um, that, and I think we, we you know, I think as the conscience of the show, I'm always reminding everyone involved in it how important it is to stay true to our fundamental idea of practicing patience, tolerance, and understanding with other people in other cultures and learning about them through food. If we can do all those things, then we're very successful. Any story that passes those litmus test then works for us. And your previous show was more of a global show. You went around the world, correct? Yep. And now it's Bizarre Foods America. Well, I was, I wanted to, uh, why are we skipping all these great stories right here at home? I mean, you know, the very first ep- domestic episode that we ever shot um, was something that I was just amazed by. You know, people, when I'm in tribal African world, they expect me to see some goofy stuff and experience some goofy things it, vis-a-vis what you know, life is like in suburban Minneapolis, where I live. When you uncover stuff in America, it becomes even more profound. And our country is built on the premise that people from everywhere are welcome here, and the American dream is still alive and well. And so to be able to tell immigrant stories about food in our country, because there really is no American food unless we're with some of the first peoples of our country, which we've done five or six of those shows, you know, and eating buffalo and pemmican and rolling pumpkins into fires. Um, We are a nation of immigrants, Mm -hmm. and I think it's important to tell those stories where we find them. And it's so interesting because your show really pulls us all together to the table, let's say, you know? We we pull us together because we learn about other cultures. You have to go in there and actually eat some of those foods. The the fun part for me, I remember a show in Finland and I was sitting, we always do a family meal in every episode. And I didn't speak their dialect of Finnish and they didn't speak English, but I was laughing at all the grandmother's jokes and they were laughing at things I was saying and I realized that you don't need to speak the same language because at the dinner table, I knew the mom was saying, sit up straight, 
finish all your food, pass him the water first, make sure, don't take all the lingonberries. I mean, I knew what she was saying because that's what we would be saying in my home. And I think that's a very profound experience. Humanistic. Well, the degree, what we preach in our show is that the degree to which we all have so much in common is how we should define ourselves, not by our differences, language, sexuality, religion, political attitude. What we're supposed to do, and I think we, we celebrate that in Bizarre Foods, is celebrate our commonalities, like food. Math and music are great, but if you take someone's tape deck away or their, uh, I'm dating myself, you take away someone's DVD, CD collection, take away their iPod, iPod. Oh, you <laughs> um, or you take away uh, their quadratic equation, there, there's not going to be a revolution. But if you take away their rice or potatoes, there's going to be blood in the streets. And I think that's important to remember. Food is the great common denominator. So true. Is there one thing that most surprises you about what you do when you travel around? Um, how I'm able to keep doing it. Yeah. It is a very, people um, I think would be surprised, and there's no amount of conveying it, how tough it is to keep making quality television. And, uh, you know, the, the crew that I work with and the people that help me make this show are incredible. Why the bizarre food angle? What? How did that come about? It's so interesting. Well, like I said before, I mean, you know, food with a story people haven't heard about is best of all. And where do you find those things? It's from, it's at the fringe. Mm -hmm. And that fascinated me. I mean, the, you know, the very first moment I went into a getamono bar in Tokyo where businessmen eat for sport, um, I was... I was shocked. I'm like, people, you're eating? You're so brave that you do it. How do yeah, you get well, your mind around some of those things? It's kind of goofy. Um, I have a genuine curiosity about it. I learned it from my father, um, who traveled for work and took me with him in a lot of different places. And it was, it was a, a, a massive lesson he taught me a long time ago that, you know, and it, and it is a cliche, but it is true. When in Rome, you know, do as the Romans, you'll learn more. Um, he also taught me that, you know, and I'm, you know, look, I mean, I was, I want to teach art history at one point in my life. Um, I love museums, but I learn more about a country going to a rural vegetable market than I do walking around looking at 2,000 year old uh, sculpture. You do is amazing. Now you have a relationship with the James Beard Foundation long before you were awarded these awards. I do. Uh, well, I've always been uh, active in the organization. Uh, my father introduced me to James Beard when I was very, very young. He's a. Uh, my dad lived on Horatio Street in Manhattan, right around the corner uh, from Jim's house that is now Foundation headquarters, HQ, so to speak. Um, so I've always felt a, a kinship with the the food greats of that generation and it, you know it was Beard and Craig Claiborne and Alfredo Viazzi and uh, Jim Clancy who just passed away and, and a lot of men who um, were trying to tell people about what was available if you embraced a food life in terms of learning about culture and I learned it from those guys uh, as a young man or at least I was exposed to it so when I came around to this later on in life things happened in a very good way for me. Now I have to ask is there anything you won't Try. Walnuts. Uh, <laughs> I did not expect. I've eaten in my whole life. It's the last thing I want to try. Now you probably you talk a lot about your father and you're really how he really helped to shape what yeah. you became. Yeah. You have children. I, I do. My son Noah's eight. Are they interested in what you do? Uh, Are they grossed out? So. Or do they think you're the coolest? Yeah. Well, he thinks I'm the coolest when I'm not around. When I'm telling him to clean his room, he thinks I'm the worst dad in the whole world. Now, Andrew, I know you're so busy. Congratulations. Thank it's you. wonderful having you here. It's wonderful it. having you here and. and and your show is fantastic. We well, love it's so it. great Keep for you to help too. preach the message of what Absolutely. we're trying to do the other 364 days a year with the James Beard Foundation. It's about scholarships and raising money for education, awareness about uh, food culture in America. Oh, I wanted to mention, you have an I, can you tell me about the, it's I. Oh, I Bob's. Uh -huh. we, yeah, I mean, I partner with I Bob's to try to, you know, put more money into the scholarship fund at the foundation. People know about the awards, they know about events like these, they know about dinners at the Beard House, but what they don't understand is how vitally important it is to educate and make aware this next generation of American chefs and, and, and food lovers. There's not enough space in restaurants for all the people coming out of cooking schools, but those young people that are getting Beard scholarships are gonna solve water problems, food insecurity, uh, food distribution problems, they are our future and food will solve our problems. The, the correcting where we've made mistakes over the last two decades, I think is vitally important work and the, the foundation does a lot of that. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for joining us here oh, on VBH. Keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate we love it. it.
Hi, I'm Chef Tom Fraker from Melissa's Produce from Los Angeles, California. Awesome to be here with Chefs and Champagne. It's a great, great honor to be here, actually. Um, today we're serving a grilled shrimp on a tropical salsa, crostini, with a little balsamic reduction. And this first time I've been here, and I'm loving it. It's a great honor, and plenty of people, and we're just trying to make everybody happy. Melissa's World Variety Produce, our uh, website is melissas.com. We ship produce all over the world. We bring it in from all over the world. We're the freshest, the, we're the largest exotic produce distributor. And we ship all over the country, all the major venues, sports venues, all that stuff. And you can buy directly from us, mail order, everything. Uh, if we don't have it, you can't get it. I'm here with Diane Harris-Brown, Director of Educational and Community Programming at the James Beard Foundation. That's right. So Tell me about how you find the recipients and how, uh, how that works. Well, it's an open call for applicants on okay. April 1st of every year, okay. and we grant, we've grant we just granted over $440,000 worth of financial aid for scholarships from all kinds of programs rage, ranging from community college and vocational tech schools all the way up through uh, Johnson & Wales University, which actually started as a business college and now has a highly acclaimed culinary program and a museum. But, um, you know, all the top schools like the International Culinary Center and the Cul Culinary Institute of America are sending us students who benefit from the Beard Foundation Scholarship Program. And, and what an honor it is for a scholarship recipient to be able to say that they received that from the James Beard Foundation. I mean, that will go on to launch them into... A well, our career. Uh, we certainly hope so because there is a wide range of talents and very diverse backgrounds. And uh, this is what Beard was known for. He was an educator. He taught cooking. He wrote cookbooks. He was known as the Dean of American Gastronomy because he, back in the 40s and 50s, and he helped Americans, we as Americans, appreciate our own culinary heritage, our local ingredients, our farmers, our regional recipes. You know, you didn't have to be from France or Italy or Germany to be a great cook. And that was really his legacy more than anything else. So carrying on that educational um, program is a very significant mission of the foundation. I'm here with Chef Eric Miller of Madison in Maine. New restaurant this year in Sag Harbor. How are you, everybody? Love Sag Harbor. S so do we. I think it's the best town there is. How's it going? It's going extremely well. Uh, we're in the old historic district near the Whalers Museum, and everybody's walking the town now, and we have the happy hour during the afternoon and the whole town is coming to uh, see us. You did a beautiful restaurant front. Thank you really very much. Pretty. Thank really you very pretty. much. Well, we exposed all the walls, the original walls from 100 years ago, and my son Adam Miller, who's a designer, Waverly and Irving, painted the mural, a 60-foot mural that on works the wall. Out well, yeah. well, you know, you're trying to get a plug-in for my guy, so, yeah. you know. <laughs> and uh, we're serving a lot of local seafood. Like what you have here is an oyster from Three Mile Harbor. I did a little wow. mango salsa and some copper cress uh, greens on top that have a little tangerine flavor to them. So we're trying to use local fishermen and local baymen wow. and trying to source all fish we can locally. So flukes and black sea bass and stripes and striped bass and scallops and lobstermen who are really struggling these days. I think they need an advocate for what they're doing. So I'm trying to be that advocate, if I can, in the Hamptons. But this isn't your first venture out here. Tell me about the other... Well, I own um, Food & Company and Hampton Clam Bake Many as well. Many people know that. So my brother over here, Mark Miller, is my partner mm -hmm. uh, at Food & Company and Clam Bakes. And, um, you know, we cater both, uh, you know, fancy stuff like this and we do stuff on the beach as well. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and try this, I can't wait. Please no do. No fork, do I just like Just make slurp. it happen. Make, ha make it happen. Okay. Yeah. So You're a lady. Here we go. Oh. You got it all now. <laughs> May I? And that little thing at the end is a corn shoot. This little corn shoot is from Copper Crest, and if you eat that, eat that separately. Yeah, so like my popcorn. first oyster of the year. Right, I mean, it tastes, it, tastes that. it tastes like popcorn. 
So interesting. Yeah, it's interesting what they're doing. So there's a lot of really good stuff going on on the on this end of Long Island. That was so delicious. And, Thank you so much. Thank you. I can't now wait to come shame. in and Enjoy have some it. food. You too. Thank Here, you. I like the elbow. I'm here with Nicole from Hamptons.com. We were just talking about, wow, I remember when you first started and now you're huge, you're big. Wow. We're huge, we're absolutely huge. Congratulations. You're really number nine online and 19 years now as I the went, company. I was just saying, I went to you to find out information on Andrew. Zimmer. We have, Andrew Zimmer was fantastic and Chefs and Champagne is one of my top three events Why? all summer long. It, it is the top because I love to eat, I, I love, love food. Too. This is the place to come and have the best of everything. Isn't it great just to eat the little taste of the most delicious bites? It is. And I then I get that. to have more than one. I know, right? You go back. I'll have dinner two or three times. I'll have my cheese platter two or three times. And I'll have dinner five or six times. Okay, so tell me, what have you had that you love? That we I've should had, go. So far, there was a brisket over there. There was a corn polenta and more Moto's here. I cannot wait to see what he's got planned. Wow. So what's going to be good? With Hamptons.com, anything fun, fun, fun we should know about? We just relaunched the website. Yeah, go on fantastic. the website and look. www.hamptons.com. Mm -hmm. We relaunched. Did so many new things with the site. We expanded our video. We expanded oh, photos. That's so Everything great. got big and fun. I'm so glad. Thank you. It's We're having so a lot great. of good time. I think you're great, and it's so good to see Hamptons.com grow and grow and grow. Thank you. Well, and WBVH, you guys are fantastic. It's so fun to have so many great local media outlets out here. And, and to get along. Isn't that nice? Everybody, <laughs> we see each other all summer. I spend more time with you guys and the Shimizu brothers who are behind the camera. <laughs> Kisses to you. Then I do my own husband and kids all summer long. Oh so, God. like, we should really consider the, the media carpool. Okay, so how do you, you go everywhere. down like, when you're not working? When I'm not working, I go to the beach on a Sunday night mm -hmm. and I'll grab a bottle of wine and whatever I can take to the, whatever's in the refrigerator left over from the week. And we sit on the beach, the kids play in the water, the dog sits there and hangs out because he's afraid of the water. And we just chill out and relax and talk, my husband and I. Aren't we so lucky? He's so busy, I'm so busy, and that's our one night to just do nothing. Are we so great. lucky to live out here? I feel so lucky. We live where people come for vacation. I know. I and know. we live here year round. How I lucky know. are we? I know. <laughs> Shh, wait, we shouldn't say. I'm not telling Terrible, you anybody know. this. Don't, don't, don't come, come to the Hamptons. No. Do not come here. Yeah. Never. No, 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 no. So fun to catch up with you. Cheers to you. Yep, thank you. Cheers thank to BBH. Cheers. cheers, cheers. Thanks, Thanks so much. Cheers to summer in the Hamptons. Have a great summer. Hi, I'm Todd Mitgang from Crayfish Bar located in New York City on 2nd Avenue and 50th Street. Also of South Edison Restaurant located at 17 South Edison Street in Montauk, New York. Today we are um, representing ourselves with a delicious organic Shetling Island salmon that's been torched, some sun gold tomatoes, fava bean, popped quinoa, and Copper Crest was nice enough to donate beautiful microgreens. We're using the tangerine and red shiso. Some great feedback. It's a pleasure to be here at the event. Yes, we're very excited. We love James Beard event. We participate in the city. Yeah, we've cooked at the James Beard house twice. It's an honor to be here. Thanks so much. Again, we're located at 945 Second Avenue. Our web address is crayfishbar.com, along with our Twitter handle and Facebook handle. Come check us out. I'm here with George Mendes, chef of Aldea Restaurant. Where's Aldea Restaurant? Aldea is in New York City on 17th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Love it. So look at you, cooking up some quail on yes, the grill. Yes, yes, it's a perfect yeah. summer treat. You know? I just, I love what you just said. I said, wow, you're brave out here cooking. You said, no, it's the love of cooking. It's a love, it's a craft. You know, you just gotta love it. You know, it's, it's about 100 degrees out here right now, plus a 500 degree grill. It's still a lot of fun. Is this your gym? <laughs> you lose so yeah, much just, weight. Yeah, I'm sweating. <laughs> Yeah, losing, shedding some pounds. Tell me about Aldea. Aldea um, opened in 2009. It's a Portuguese-inspired restaurant. We take a lot of classical, traditional Portuguese dishes and refine them and interpret them in a modern way. Um, 
but also with the free spirit, you know, it's market driven. We have a farmer's market down the street. So it's, it's a celebration of, of my upbringing, my heritage, but also my formal classical French training, etc. So, okay, so tell me about the dish you're preparing this so evening. Right now it's a uh, quail that's been marinated in actually my mother's marinade recipe of vigne verde, uh, olive oil, paprika, sliced onion, garlic, and carrots. Wow. And that's just for two days. And then we uh, take them out of the marinade and then we season them with some salt and it goes on a grill. And these are actually going to come off right now. So we want to serve them around medium okay. and let them How do you know they're medium? Just by feeling them, yeah. Okay. Go ahead, put, put your hand there. Okay. Yeah. So they're not, if they were raw, it would give a lot and would leave your imprint of your finger. So these are really at that point where now we're going to put them over here and let them rest because we cook them for about five minutes. You want to let, let them rest before we cut them or else they're going to bleed out. And all the Meats too. Right? Same thing. Yeah. So tell me, get our, get our viewers taste buds really going. Tell me about some other dishes you serve up at. So Aldea has a signature dish is our, our duck rice. It's an arroz de pato, which is uh, basically a whole duck that we break down into the breast, the legs. Legs are cooked confit. Um, the breast, we render the skin uh, and, and cook the breast so medium rare. And then we take the skin and make it into a, like a cracker, really crispy crackling. And then the rice is cooked with uh, onions in a sofrito with onions, garlic, tomato, saffron. Um, and then we add chorizo and black olives. Wow, well, I'm going to let you get back together. to your, your grilling because I know it's a very fine line here. Yeah, yes. Oh, oh it got burned. <laughs> That's so, it. That's not going to air. <laughs> George, yeah. thank you so much. I'm going to go over there and taste it. Yes, Yum. please do. Okay, so here we have the beautifully grilled quail here. George Mendez is beautifully grilled quail. Can I try one? Sure, go ahead. What's and your name? My name is Emily. Hi. Hi. It's topped with uh, citrus puree as well as pickled fig. Coming to you live from Chefs and Champagne, a hot, sultry night of July 20th here with Hamptons TV. Before I forget, support your local restaurants because one of the things about this event is it's, it's, these are Manhattan restaurants. There are some local restaurants here. Almond is here. Fresh is here. I believe Madison and Maine in here is here. Scrimshaw from the North Fork is here. So those are some of our uh, local representatives. It's a really great night. There's a lot of wonderful food, great champagne, and my friend, a little known fact, the honoree is Andrew Zimmern. Well, Andrew Zimmern, of course, is the host of Bizarre Foods. 23 years ago, I don't know if you guys knew this, but Andrew and I worked together at a restaurant called Cafe Raquel and Andrew was quite the wild man I was a knucklehead and I guess all's well that ends well because uh, at least he's successful so I'm really uh, I'm really honored to be here to help honor him and um, you know uh, it's a great night and again you support your local restaurants and Hamptons TV and uh, chefs and champagne in the beard house I'm Billy Oliva, executive chef of the Delmonico's Restaurant Group. Uh, it was great to be here at Chefs and Champagne. Uh, what we have here is um, Delmonico steak, a little lobster salad with avocado, mango relish, on a toasted brioche crouton. Um, that's what we're serving today at this great event. Um, it's our first time here. Uh, we're happy to be here. It's a great event. And when we're not here, we'll be at Delmonico's of Southampton on 268 Elm Street, right across the street from the train station. So come check us out. So what we have here is Delmonico steak, a lobster salad, with a little avocado mango relish, on a toasted brioche crouton. So here, this is for you. Go ahead, take a bite.
catch up with Roman Roth, head of wine making at the Wolfer Estate Vineyards here in Sagaponic. Hi, Roman. Hello. Cheers. Great to be here again at Justin Champagne. Oh, the summer doesn't start until you have a glass of Wolfer Vineyard Rosé. Well, we created a monster. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Can you believe this is the 22nd year? Yes, it's I, unbelievable. I can't believe it. Uh, Where's time it go? Started, well, <laughs> Showing a little bit the time, of yeah, course. No. <laughs> you, you're looking the same. <laughs> so tell me, what's going on at Wolfer this summer? Well, it's a great. We have Joey Wolfer, Mark Wolfer. You know, it's a great, a great estate that has a great vibrancy. We're focused on quality, focused on amazing wines, and it's great. I think New Yorkers are proud of what we're doing, and we make sure we raise the bar in case they stay on that path. You do, and you keep you keep Wolfers up. Up to standards, it's amazing yeah. the work you do. It's incredible. Well, How yeah. are the grapes this year? We've this kind year of a wet... we had a bit of a wet season, yeah. but as a result, we took precautions. Mm -hmm. We the vineyard looks more manicured than ever, mm -hmm. so it's primed for something great. Now all we have to have a little bit more luck, like today. Yeah. Some a couple of great weeks of sunshine, and we'll make another great vintage. Oh, uh, I'm sure you will. Ho hopes are high. <laughs> I'm here with Chef Alex Cornichelli from Butter. Yes. Hi, nice to see you. You too. What are you serving up? I know you're busy. Uh, it's just some peas with uh, lemon and ricotta and uh, crispy millet, which is a grain. Why did you choose this dish? I want to make something vegetarian and summery today. You know, I felt like a lot of people would go for the meat or the fish. Yeah. I like everybody to be eating whatever. It's healthy to eat a no, uh, vegetarian meal about three times a week. Two to three times a week. As an omnivore, I'll say more like one, but agreed, <laughs> as much as possible. Like Michael Pollan says, eat plants. What is it? Eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Tell me about butter in the city. Oh, uh, I have a restaurant on Lafayette Street called Butter, which is wonderful. Uh, French-American fare, a lot of green market stuff. Signature dish? Oh, I don't know. If, do we have one? Maybe cavatappi pasta with lamb sausage and yellow tomatoes. Jeanette Barth Cohen, Executive Director of the Hampton Classic, who we always catch up with here at this event. This is great. This is where we get to catch up and talk about what's going on with the Hampton Classic. Absolutely. It's right I, around the corner. It's so true, but I get to enjoy this event and not be crazed the way I am at the Hampton Classic, but we're really excited about it. We're a little more than a month away. It's amazing, which is nothing at all. No, it's, it's right true. Around the corner. It's right around the corner. So, so what's going on? What do we have to expect? Of so a lot of um, exciting things. We have our Hunter Derby, a $50,000 Hunter class in the nice. Grand Prix run, uh, ring on opening day, which we started doing last year and were, was so well received. We've moved our lead line back to opening day, so that'll be fun. Wow. Um, we'll see our little riders being walked around and oh, interviewed wow. by um, Joe Farges and judged by Joe Farges, the Olympic oh, gold medalist, so that'll be fun. That's so cute. We have um, ASPCA Adoption Day again on Monday. And, of course, the finale, um, at the end of the show, we have the $250,000 FTI Grand Prix and World Cup qualifier. That's on Grand Prix Sunday, September 1st. I know. I think it's so important that, that people come out during the week because it's such a great time to come and really get to know the ground, see what's Absolutely. going on, shop the boutiques. Right. We have about 80 shops Amazing on site. Boutiques. We have a petting zoo area. Um, oh, nice. We have the Long Island Livestock Company. We'll have their llamas and goats, and they, they have a pig named Pansy who we love. And um, so that's fun too. We have the Wildlife Rescue of the Hamptons will be there doing demonstrations. Um, a lot of different groups. We actually have some um, awareness building coming out too this year with um, the Delete Blood Cancer group. They're trying to register people for the bone marrow registry. Um, and we might be having a tick-borne illness educational um, thing there too that affects so many of us out here and horses as well. Stay tuned, you're watching Hamptons Television. I'm here with Lauren Azurski, TV personality, fashionista, fashionista. Thank you, and like eating. I, I was supposed to start a little diet Food enthusiast. Today. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this lobster thing. I've been eating like at every stall. This is so amazing. Look at diets today. Kick them, get them. Oh, we're breaking up with our diets today. Yes, we are, and I actually started out with dessert. <laughs> Cinderella had this mango, which I love dessert. Usually when I go to a restaurant, I actually look at the dessert menu before I even look at the main menu, because I'm a sweet nut. Sweet nut, love it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. 
miss it. What Don't are you having now? This is lobster that my assistant just brought to me. Look how good I kind of ate a lot of it already, so it's not a really good, what you're not getting the, such a good shot. What says the East End more than lobster and corn? You know what? Uh, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> that's a, Zoe, <laughs> that's true. At you're the right. Wolver Vineyard. <laughs> and it's so beautiful here. It's just, so it's kind of like a slice of heaven. It's one of the reasons that the Hamptons is so great. Well, it's so nice to drive by and have this land still just so picturesque and Absolutely. a vineyard. I just think it was the best thing that ever happened to you Absolutely. All. And you know, their wine is very world-renowned. I mean, people order it from Europe. They order cases of Wolfer. So I'm not surprised. I yeah, love no, it's, it. It's really good. So, Lauren, what are you up to, to now? Well, I'm just eating. You're out I, of the city. I'm out of the city. I'm living out here for the summer, oh. um, attending events, just relaxing. Went to the beach today, eating here, just living out here enjoying the glamorous life. Michelle Richard, oh, who's you. good, whose restaurant, Villard Michelle Richard, is opening in the New York Palace this September. Uh, yes, September, very, very soon. Right around the corner. All right, and I hope to see you there. We're going to give you some great food. How about some great food tonight? What are you serving up? Yeah, today we have a, this, the tomato tartare. Yeah. Dice of tomato marinated with lots of love. Olive oil, vinegar, shallots. Tomatoes are the fruit of the summer. Oh, fruit of the summer. <laughs> That's right. And here we have a, an eggshell made with white chocolate, lemon, and meringue. And a little nest. You should come here and I will give it to you. So tell us about Villard Michel Richard, the restaurant. Oh, the restaurant is going to be great. We're opening in two weeks. In, uh, at the, a busy at the, man. At, at, the, at the beautiful uh, Palace Hotel. I love the Palace Hotel. It's my you favorite. Love it? I love it. Oh, but it's going to be better. I will come. It's going to be nice. We have a great restaurant, two restaurants, one fancy one and one bistro. Oh. And a pastry shop. So excited. Food to go. And you're going you're gonna to come in. It's going to be so great. So let's get down to business. Do I get to try this? Okay, here we go. You you hold my microphone. I'll get to I'll eat. Okay. Mm. Oh, it's so good. You see what the way she moved there. Delicious. Hi, I'm James Merker. I'm from Mile End Delicatessen in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, we're a Montreal-style Jewish deli. Um, and today we're serving here at Chefs and Champagne a little uh, veal brisket that's been smoked and then grilled. Uh, a little bit of heirloom carrot salad that's pickled and raw, and a little bit of salsa verde on that. On top, you see a little bit of um, chicken chicken skin, which we call gribbonous. Uh, this has been rendered down, and it's crispy. Topped with a little bit of uh, copper cress, aphelia, and uh, tangerine. It's been a pleasure here at Chefs and Champagne. Uh, you can find us in the in the city in Brooklyn at 97 Hoyt Street and at 53 Bond Street in Manhattan. We hope to see you soon. Chef Jason Weiner from Almond Restaurant in Bridgehampton at New York City and L&W Oyster Company, also in, in New York City. And what we have here today is a yellow gazpacho, and it's sort of a perfect illustration of what we do. All these ingredients that went into the gazpacho came from about a five-mile radius out here in Bridgehampton. And, uh, you know, we're all about respecting the ingredient and doing something nice and simple with a little bit of a whimsical touch, and I hope we succeeded. The James Beard Foundation is something really special. I'm always happy to do this event. Almond NYC is located at 12 East 22nd Street in the shadow of the Flatiron Building between Park Avenue and Broadway. We're also located in Bridgehampton on the corner of Ocean Road, and we our newest addition to the Almond family is L&W Oyster Company. In fact, I have here next to me Chef de Cuisine David Belknap from L&W Oyster Company. 
What we do there is a little bit of a departure from the Amman formula. It's located on 5th Avenue between 28th and 29th. Come see us. I'm here with Atera Restaurant from New York City, and Matthew Leitner, the chef, is not here right now, but who are you? I am Jamie Young. Okay, and you do a lot of work in there. You can tell us about what you're doing. Here. Yes, we're doing a crab cocktail okay. with uh, piqui crab, smoked tomatoes, and uh, lobster consomme. And your name? My name is Ian Rothman. Okay, so why crab? Oh, it's a season. It's really hot outside. It's very refreshing. It's light. Yeah. So it's really tasty. Tell me about Atera. Um, Atera is... Um, we do two seatings, um, about 16 people per seating. It's a 20 to 28 course menu, um, mostly inspired by the market. Um, chef is very seasonally driven. Um, we have a forager on hand, so um, a lot of our ingredients are very special and um, seasonal. Okay, so Atero's crab cocktail with heirloom tomatoes. Here we go. Yum. I love crab. Excellent. I haven't had crab yet. This oh. summer. It's my first. Enjoy it. So good. Cheers. Cheers. You know, this is a celebration with a purpose. For since 1991, our foundation has awarded over 4.5 million dollars in financial aid to deserving culinary students, the future chefs and winemakers of America. And for eight years now. In the name of the late great Christian Walker, who has many times has been up on this stage in years past to give out this beautiful scholarship to a future winemaker or chef. And we are very lucky today because we have one of Christian's daughters, Joey Walker, here to introduce our scholarship recipient of the Christian Walker uh, Scholarship today. So please welcome Joey Walker. Jamaica, New York, who will be attending the International Culinary Center in their intensive sommelier program. He got the good news a few weeks ago on his birthday and we're delighted he can join us. I'm also delighted to introduce another scholarship recipient who is benefiting from the generosity of people like you. Local Sagaponic student, also our neighbor, Christina Cassell, graduated from Johnson & Wales and is now pursuing a master's there in food service education. I'm sure both John L. and Christina are enjoying meeting our guest of honor and chefs today. Thank you, Joey. Congratulations to John L. and Christina. Wonderful scholarship recipients. We have awarded over 90 scholarships this summer to deserving students, and these are two very special ones today. Enjoying this great party. I'm here with Christina Castle, winner of the James Beard Foundation Scholarship. Hi. How are you? You didn't have far to go. No, Christina I'm is from. Her. She's from Sagaponics. So you grew up here. Yes, I did. I literally walked through the vines to get here. <laughs> exciting! But this isn't your first time. No, this is my sixth year oh. winning a scholarship. Wow. Yes, I know. It's very exciting. So tell me about what you do and what and uh, you know how that means to you, what that means to you. Well, right now um, I just graduated uh, Johnson and Wales in Providence, Rhode Island, okay. with uh, baking and pastry degree uh, four years and now I'm in grad school at Johnson & Wales uh, for education so hopefully one day I'll be able to teach in a vocational school or um, I want to focus more on farm to table farm to school with um, smaller children that's wow. my plan yes and we're so lucky here with all the farms oh yeah you want to keep them alive right yes, exactly it's so important really important yeah. so we have to start uh, educating students uh, when they're small so they're more interested in and can understand it better yeah. especially Sagaponic has some of the most beautiful farmlands oh yeah that's incredible and yeah. food yes <laughs> yes farm stand that's right <laughs> local food is very important to you then mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so tell me um, what does the James Beard Foundation mean to you? I mean, you have a wonderful relationship with them. Six years. That's right. amazing. I know. It means everything to me, and they've been so grateful to it's me. Almost like I'm a so parent. Blessed. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm so blessed. I'm so grateful, too. Oh, and it's allowed you to go on and... Yes, I'm now I'm in grad school, so it's allowed me to go, you know, five, six years. Congratulations. Yeah. Christina, it's wonderful. I can't wait to hear 
At the end, they'll announce exactly what scholarship you Great. received, yes. right? Yes. And congratula congratulations again, yes. six years. I'm here with John L., recipient of this year's Wolfer Estate Vineyard Scholarship. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Tell me about what happened when you heard. Oh, it was crazy. I heard about it actually the day before my birthday. So oh, what it was a birthday like present. A, I know, exactly. It was amazing. So you are going on to become a sommelier, right? That's the plan, definitely. Where are you going to do this? I'm going to do this at the International Culinary Center down in Soho. So I've been, I was looking at that actually. So that's the plan. So tell us, what, what do you do? What are you studying exactly? Oh, wow. Well, right now I'm basically self-studying on wine, which is what prompted me to like, you know, go for extra studies on it. Um, I'm at Amali NYC, which is um, a Greek slash Mediterranean restaurant in the Upper East Side, and that's where I began my wine studies. And just recently, I, I, I'm starting to intern for Josh Green at Wine and Spirits magazine as well. So it's all kind of like... How did this start? Where did this come from, this interest? Uh, this, this interest... We all have an interest in wine. I know. You really are taking it a wonderful step forward, so... Well, this interest came about probably a few years ago. I've just been, you know, interested in, you know, drinking wine and spirits, you know, both. And when I got to New York probably half a year ago, I thought, you know, maybe this is, you know, a chance for me to try something new, something different. And I just kind of leapt into it. And people have been supporting me everywhere I go, so. How, is, how important is it for you, the pairing of the food with a, a particular wine? It's absolutely important, I believe. I mean, I'm all for um, drinking wine by itself and appreciate, appreciating it, but there's nothing like, you know, having a good steak or whatnot with a good red. You know, it's the taste just kind of comes together and, you know, the pairing of the two kind of, you know, helps the taste for both the wine and the food as well. So it's an experience altogether. Just like this event, this is an experience altogether. How about these really? dishes with the wine and the champagne? We're in for a great night, right? Exactly. I'm so excited for it. So excited. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, we look forward to hearing about you in the future. And now, to uh, recognize today's honoree, so I'd love for you to give this your attention. I'd like to call to the stage Andrew. Andrew, thanks, Andrew. Andrew is there taking a picture with last year's honoree, Ted Allen. I see him there. Andrew, I remember when I first met you uh, at the Beard House, judging the
and I would like to salute the James Beard Foundation that many people understand only for its awards or for its parties like this or for its wonderful dinners where they promote chefs and food, raise awareness and try to educate at the Beard House, for their conferences. But the people at the James Beard Foundation are working 365 days a year to enrich our nation's culture by promoting the idea of an American food life. And this was something that was Jim Beard's legacy. And I think what's most important about it is that in our problems today with food insecurity, hunger issues, um, with our health and wellness issues when it comes to our damaged food system, the people who are gonna solve that problem are the scholarship recipients, like the ones at the James Beard Foundation, the folks who are here behind me, young people all around the world who are going to get into a food life because of the opportunity that places like the James Beard Foundation affords them. So, thank you so much for supporting the foundation and supporting the good works that it does. If you could please avail yourself of the silent auction which closes at 7.45. It's a wonderful way that we get to raise a lot more dough. So please overspend for dinner for four at your favorite restaurant because that money really does uh, go to a fantastic cause that's very near and dear to my heart. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, James Beard Foundation. And thank you for coming out. Enjoy the rest of the evening. The Iron Chef is here at Chefs in Champagne. Marimoto, it's such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, so thank you for having me. So what does this event mean to you, the James Beard Foundation? I'm honored to come here with the uh, Beard House. Um, then um, uh, I came for just, uh, not just uh, uh, Andrew Jumo, so a friend of mine. Yes, so he's a great guy and uh, that's what I came for. You bring such art and passion to your cooking, to everything that you do. Were you born with this? Did you learn this? Do you have this passion that you have for food and uh, it's made you the Iron Chef champion that you are? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not champion. But, but I brought food from uh, uh, my new concept, uh, Tribeca Canvas, which is uh, in, in uh, Tribeca, a uh, new concept with the uh, no sushi, no sashimi, no Japanese in a collaborate with. So I brought the uh, uh, chef from Tribal Canvas. And then I was so happy with the people who lined up and uh, eating, try to the, my uh, serving Tribal Canvas food. But uh, which is I use the tuna and spicy something, but running out of tuna. And then I borrow from the next door with the mission to have the, some uh, uh, tomato things. And I thought it was the uh, beef tata. <laughs> it was the tomatoes. It's great. Yeah. So I asked him to get me, give me something in, in a tomato. And, or, um, I thought that uh, I mean, uh, uh, beef tata. And then I saw with that in my uh, concept with uh, uh, macaron. It was the, uh, very. It was very you know uh, successful. So means the uh, this event is about. More, I challenging a new food, introducing some uh, people who come in the uh, uh, beer house things. So it was a great event for me. Well, we're very honored that you're here with us. Are you a New Yorker now? Do you live in New York? I live in New York, but excellent. So, and your restaurant again? Where's it located? Um, uh, at Tribeca, uh, called Tribeca Canvas. Uh, exactly address is three. Eh? 301? 313. 313. This is your manager. Yes, 313. Yes, 313. Yes, 313 we Church Street. And does it have a website? Yes. Yes, of course. Manager it. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Family here. <laughs> TribecaCanvasNYC.com. <laughs> it's located on Church Street, just south of uh, Canal Street, between Walker and Lispinard. Well, behind every great chef <laughs> is a great promoter. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for you. being part of this James Beard Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. As you can 
Fancy. This is a heck of a good time. So much good food, great champagne, great wine, all held at a beautiful location at the Wolfer Vineyard Estate. Thank you so much. I'm Zoe Penny Baker Breen, and you're watching DVH TV Chefs and Champagne. I'll see you soon. 2013.